we've had three questions about the role of ministers because in your congregations, the ministers are the visionaries. Let me tell you that in governance, minister and board work in partnership. In a policy governance model, the minister is called, or the executive function is called the prime informant. So we are in all constant dialogue. Yeah, Carver has terms for everything. Right? That's just it. Carver has terms for everything. And who is Carver? A, group, a couple in Atlanta, Georgia, who worked with nonprofit boards and said there's got to be a better way. And they came out of hospital administration. And what they did is they separate, what they realized that boards were involved in day to day operations and second guessing the staff and not empowering the staff. And we are going to get into that in greater detail. But these are about roles and functions. And I think that these things can, can operate at any size congregation. And now what I want to turn to is indicators of effective governance. These indicators do not come from Carver. They come from our experience in consulting with a wide variety of congregations around this country. And let me also say that I believe that placing the primary role of vision in your lay leaders is commiserate and reflective of our Unitarian Universalist theology. And I think when you have the vision solely in a leader, that's not, that's not true shared ministry and that's not true priesthood and prophethood of all believers, which is a basic foundational value of Unitarian Universalism. But now, I'm gonna talk about the indicators of effective governance. And they are trust, articulation, creative engagement, investment and commitment, holistic view, partnership, and an orientation to outcomes. Now, what I'm gonna do is go through these indicators step by step so that you understand what I'm talking about. First and most basic, whatever your governance style or approach is in your congregations, the bottom line is, is trust present in the system? Do you as congregational leaders feel trusted by the rest of the congregation to make difficult decisions? Do they trust that you handle your power and authority appropriately? And do they trust you to hold the big picture? And do they trust you to hold the totality of what your congregation is? Articulation. Can members of your congregation articulate the shared values, your mission, vision, of the congregation? And is there an investment in creating deeply considered values as a congregation? Are all of you, as committed leaders, capable of giving an elevator speech to a Mormon that you just met on the 16th floor? Who are the Unitarian Universalists? And if not, why not? The third indicator is creative engagement. Do members of your leadership and members of your congregation understand the issues that you are grappling with as a congregation and are you looking for solutions together? And is there a, a confidence in your congregation that there's room for new ideas and new initiatives. And lastly, 
around creative engagement. Are your leaders capable of taking that balcony view, and I say that of all your leaders, can, can people step back and take that balcony view? And when mistakes happen, do, you, do people feel blamed and shamed by those mistakes? Or is there so much trust and confidence that it's like, well, that didn't work. Let's try again. Now I want to talk about investment and commitment. And now I, it's, this is really about the quality of your board and your board investment and your board meetings. Do your meetings begin and end on time? I, one man said, you know, we have to beg people to get on our board. If, if, you, if this is a positive indicator for you, then you have more people interested in serving on your board than you have slots. Do they feel well used? Are people satisfied in their board leadership? Do they feel like they're being well used? Do they feel like they're living out their Unitarian Universalist values? And when their term ends, which hopefully is a long, fruitful term of two or three years, do they, not, do they feel wasted and done and burned out? Or do they feel invigorated and interested in staying engaged in the congregation? Next, holistic view. And what we mean by holistic view is that larger definition of fiduciary responsibility. Fiduciary responsibility definition does not mean strictly financial, but it means the ability to hold the totality of the system. And that's what we're talking about by holistic view. And we get to that holistic view by these steps, by trusting one another, by being in, able to articulate our ideas and opinions, and by engaging creatively in those holy conversations and in, in manifesting that investment and commitment together. And are we able to understand and talk to among one another what are the best interests of this, long-term best interest of this institution that we love so dearly. And next, we turn to partnership. Are we, as a congregation, able to develop and sustain partnerships among other Unitarian Universalist congregations in interfaith settings? And are we able to establish partnerships with other viable nonprofits with whom we can work in peacemaking and justice making partnerships? And lastly, an orientation towards outcomes. Are we measuring the impact that we're having? And are we afraid or excited to seek those outcomes that we truly want? And so basically, this last one, are you getting the results articulated in those nested bowls? Are you living out your mission and values? And now, what I'd like you to do is turn to your packet, pages 11 and 12, and take the time yourself to fill out pages 11 and 12.